As the United States continued to have fallback point after fallback point overrun with infected brought on by the green flu, weeks would pass and more survivors would end up meeting their demise. Eventually, a tipping point was reached due to the green flu's mutagenic ability that would result in those with previous issues and comorbidities to start exhibiting some strange new adaptations, allowing them to hunt and take down survivors better than just the standard horde. While taking a few weeks for these abilities to appear, it became quite clear that these new forms of infected would make life more difficult for the remaining non-infected. Some of these infected were stronger, some more spastic, and some absolutely devastating should you disturb them. However, one in particular would seem to arise based solely on the choices they made in their human life. This would render them somewhat more of a team player kind of infected as they slowed and choked out those running away. We are of course talking about the smoker today. This creature having clearly cancerous levels of growth would be one whose appearance is heavily altered. In this episode, we will talk about how they began to present in this way physiologically and how they are able to attack the way they do. Alright, so with that out of the way, in general, the running theory on this channel concerning the green flu, which I have an entire breakdown on it, but in case you are new here and can't remember because it's been a hot minute since we've covered Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2, is that clearly it's rabies, or at minimum a form of rabies, which is discussed in the actual lore. However, with that said, comorbidities are typically responsible for the special infected, and those can range from something as simple as a choice, to overindulgent food, which leads to diabetes in, say, like the bloaters, to the literal genetic issues affecting receptors in the brain, leading to a continuous induced manic episode in the jockeys. Essentially, those with or without natural reasons, or those with or without human choices, lead to what we see. As the green flu infected millions, it began running across these differences in DNA of a person, and upon doing so, likely adaptations would form that were more beneficial to the infected person apart from just, you know, forming up with a giant group of other infected and running people down to which a survivor actually appears quite capable of surviving should they be skilled enough. The behavior of a smoker is typically one who will stay within the horde. Appearing mildly taller than the average horde member, this would give them the ability to spot survivors not moving quite like the infected do. A smoker is also known to not only move within the horde, but stalks the upper walkways of buildings and even rooftops, hides behind pillars under highways, and in general just likes to stay out of the line of sight. Doing this gives them a much better ability to ambush non-infected and then drag them off to their demise, while the horde not only blocks counterattacks from the survivor group, but depending on location, completely impedes the group's ability to get to the smoker, meaning that even if they do free the victim, smoker can attack again only a short time later. Getting a good look at the smoker, we see quite clearly that this person has some major alterations to the structuring of their face, mostly which is to be expected. Taking things like the tank who was a soldier and as a result likely worked out most of his life, which resulted in more muscle after infection due to genetic factors allowing for increased muscle mass, Smoker is no different in that their genetic coding was likely heading towards something that would come after them in a few years. But with the addition of the green flu, this caused them to accelerate those issues leading to the masses that we see on the face. But before we get to discussing what exactly those choices did and how it would affect them, we must first cover their morphology because my guy is styling and basically wearing the same thing that I wear on a daily basis. So first things first, we will actually not be starting with the feet today, that'll be later. I know probably just gonna instantly dislike this, but it's a risk I have to take. Looking at the overall appearance of this person based on their hairline, clothes being worn, and general physiology, Smoker appears to be a middle-aged man, likely in his late 30s, possibly 40s. This is important to remember. He's at a point in life when likely mutations within the DNA have begun to build up just by natural exposure to life, and this will play a role later. So now moving down to the feet, we can see that there's really nothing too much to be said. Wearing a pair of boots, the extent of the mutations within the body do not appear to have touched this area, or if it has, the structuring of the foot is is likely the same as it always was, and the mutation is only skin deep. Moving further up to the legs, we see that this person was definitely taller and more lanky. They have longer legs than what could be assumed to be average, which has given them a height advantage over others. This longer stride would also make them quicker at getting into cover after spotting survivors roaming the area. They are wearing just your standard pair of blue jeans, which again, do not appear to be outlining any sort of mutation under them, so structurally the legs are the same. No added muscle mass, no added bone, just a regular good old pair of walking sticks. Moving up to the admin is where we can start to make some assumptions as to what's going on. The man appears to still be kind of more of a skinny person, however with that said, a case could be made that the intestines in this area aren't exactly static. Now normally our guts are held in by visceral tissue known as the mesentery, which is a fold of membrane that actually attaches the intestines and holds them in place as it bridges the gap between the intestine and abdominal wall. Its purpose is to make sure that everything that needs to be in a particular place doesn't shift when we move or fold or put pressure on the organs as they are pretty slippery and 
and otherwise would have a natural compulsion to. However, with the smoker, it may be possible that this membrane actually is no longer in place or was heavily damaged. There are some theories as to why this is the case, but we will discuss those momentarily. Moving up to the chest and shoulders of this creature, we see that he does have a longer torso again, likely because he was a taller person pre-infection life, and this length has transferred down to his arms. Before getting there though, obviously on the left shoulder, we begin to see the large tumorous masses. It appears that it comes from the face, but in reality, this entire side of the body concerning on the shoulder girdle is really all tumorous. The body is covered with skin that appears to hold pus and a gaseous material underneath. This extends down to the arm all the way to the hand. So the left arm has these bumps underneath showing that something is happening on this side of the body underneath, but does not appear on the other arm in such capacity. Now this is not to say it's not there at all. If you look closely at the right arm, you can see that in some areas, the same bumps are beginning to form, likely indicating the same transformation will take place on the other side of the body as well, but this is the early stages. The hands do have stubby claws, much like the other infected, that can be used to attack people, but does very little damage overall, and really is more reliant on the horde to do most of the damage. Moving back up to the head, we get to see the real money shot. The head is quite altered. On the left side, a large tumor can be seen almost overtaking the face and neck entirely. This tumor runs down to about the xiphoid process at the base of the sternum. A part of this tumor, however, are multiple protruding muscular spears, at least in Left 4 Dead 2. In the original Left 4 Dead, this face was much like the arm and that there were kind of like lumps on the face, but a single tongue was used as the standard hunting wrap. In Left 4 Dead 2, however, this disease seems to have progressed to the point of adding more tongues jutting out of this tumor. The face of this person, despite being mainly just a mass of flesh, is still somewhat visible. Facial structures haven't really been all that altered underneath this mass. We can still see that the mouth is there in some capacity, the ear is still there on the right side, the nose is definitely present but has been pushed to one side due to the mass growth, and only one eye remains functional with the other ocular cavity likely completely destroyed due to the pressure of the tumor. And the man still has his hair, mostly on his head, which is still just kind of left over, but on the other side, yeah, the tumor is pretty much just totally ruined that. So you may be shocked to learn this, but the smoker produces smoke upon its expiration. When the creature finally succumbs to the countermeasures by survivors, it will burst into a cloud of smoke, causing the survivor eyes to burn and for them to begin coughing themselves. Now this has created some confusion as to what exactly is going on with this creature, so let's run down a list of possibilities real quick as to what is happening internally of this former person. The name Smoker has a really kind of a dual purpose as we begin to look at the changes to the body, which should be fairly unsurprising to you. Originally, this person was likely a smoker in their former life. Much like how acid reflux and gastritis may be responsible for the spitter and her abilities, the smoke this person inhaled over time likely not only damaged the internal organs to a degree, but damage the genetic coding of their cells. Concerning the damage at the smallest level with genetics, this person had more mutations than normal likely begin to pile up. So being middle-aged, it's not uncommon to have genetic damage from the thing known as pure existence. Issues with mitosis, exposure to UV radiation, even just inhalation of oxygen, which is a reactive element. Essentially, life is dangerous and our DNA suffers as a result. However, what other people may not have that this person does is the mutagenic effect brought on by smoke inhalation, which leads to the destruction of cilia within the lungs, allowing for an environment to further damage DNA as debris, viruses, and waste in general are much less effectively ousted. We know that the green flu obviously induces mutations, and it would appear that these mutations are based upon genes. Coming across the smoker's genes, this area of the body more affected by the smoke would cause the green flu to actually mutate these areas more heavily. Obviously, these areas where the smoke would come into contact with would be the mouth, where the tumor seems to sprout from, likely meaning that this person was going to suffer from cancerous growths at some point in their life. I would also like to point out that the muscular spears, which appear to be like tongues that come out of the tumor, are carrying a flame for the genetic coating of the mouth, which might be why they look like the tongues that form within the mouth itself. The shoulder and arm may appear odd, but in reality, the way the heart is structured, these areas are closest to where the heart pumps blood into the lung via pulmonary arteries and then back out through the pulmonary veins, then through the aorta. It would appear that the green flu interacted with these cells in particular more aggressively and as a result, cancer appears on this side of the body first. Now, likely most of the DNA is damaged to some degree, which is why we can see lumps beginning to appear on the right arm as well, despite it being further away from the source. This would indicate that likely underneath clothing, more lumps will begin to appear, and also based on this information, we can assume internally issues are also forming, which leads us to our first hypothesis about the tongue and ropey material used to grab survivors. But before getting to that, remember, the events between Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2, I believe there's a couple weeks in place and you can actually see the progression of this disease as the tumor continues to grow. So the first and most prominent idea is that really the ropey spear 
Smoker is just his tongue. Smoker uses his tongue, which has grown at cancerous levels, to wrap around survivors and then pull them in. This muscle rope may just curl up within the cancerous overgrowth and extends down into the chest, almost like how a chameleon can roll up its tongue and extend it when it needs to. However, this tongue would likely not actually be its actual tongue. When you take out a smoker, you can actually still see that they have their original tongue in place. Regardless of what it is, this rope is able to regenerate within about 30 seconds to full size again and continue to be used. And based on this information, this would mean that the cells are essentially going through mitosis at like super cancer levels. Just as a disclaimer, this amount of mitosis that quickly would likely just completely destroy cellular activity within the area because it would cook it. The second hypothesis is that perhaps you're actually seeing the intestines being used from the smoker. This would make more sense seeing as the length required for the tongue to reach about 100 feet away is already almost present within us for the most part. Obviously, length would be increased to some capacity to reach as far as it does, but working from what you already have internally, the intestines are shot out and used to wrap around survivors. This may be a function once again of internal damages suffered by smoking initially. So the aorta does run to the left side of the body almost first because it is closer, but it also does run straight down to the abdominal aorta as well to supply the intestines with oxygen and nutrients. This means that after smoking, you do ultimately end up affecting the health of your intestines, but not only just that, you may be swallowing smoke and as a result, some stomach cells and intestinal cells can be affected to cancerous levels as well. This would cause the introduction of the green flu to make the intestines growth much like that of the shoulders and face of this creature. However, rather than making them lumpy like we will see under the skin, the overall length of the intestines has increased and is able to be fired out. So there is like a third hypothesis concerning fungus, but I'm going to be honest with you, no other infected has been invaded by a fungus that we can really tell. And considering the green flu seems to keep other infections at bay, I doubt an opportunistic fungus would be allowed to flourish using the body's resources while the green flu was currently ransacking the meat suit. But here's what I believe is happening to these infected. It's really a combination of the first two hypotheses. Likely due to the smoking, this person heavily altered their DNA of these areas, and rather than it being like one or the other, they work together. The intestines are lengthened to a degree and the mesentery is broken down. The reason we don't see a bulging abdomen is because the esophagus was pushed up and lengthened as well, likely along with the tongue, pulling some of the intestine up with it. Within the cancerous growth on the face, considering that it is almost really a holding area, it could be kind of theorized that this is where the rolled up esophageal muscle is. Upon seeing prey, this can contract and fire out the esophagus of this person, and with its forward momentum, it pulls out the intestine of them as well, creating like a rope long enough to reach people at great distances. After the person is ensnared, they can then use the same cancerous holding area, which clearly has the ability to fire out an esophagus, and it can retract as well with a fair amount of power. Doing this reels the person back in, and should they be pulled all the way back, they will be slashed by the smoker and the horde. However, if they get stuck on something, this muscle has enough strength to pin them and then begin to constrict their ability to move and then eventually breathe, leading to their end should they not be freed. Now, as for the smoke cloud they produce, this is another reason people believe this creature to possibly be infected with some sort of opportunistic fungus. Again, though, I doubt that this is the case. Instead, look no further than the boomer, a creature who quite clearly produces gas to explosive results and no fungus is required. Instead, the naturally occurring runaway mechanisms and a plug in the right area to produce it. For the smoker, it's clear that these cells themselves are producing a gas. And I would have to say, due to the nature of the cloud and how energetic it is, I would say it's probably hydrogen sulfide being produced in mass quantities. Because of the muscular contractions within the tumor on the face to propel the tongue, this gas may actually be used in some capacity to essentially shift muscle around to fire the tongue out. Upon being breached, this will cause the fragile tumor to rupture and explode. Usually hydrogen sulfide is colorless, but with cellular debris being a part of that energy release, this blankets the area in the smoker's remains, at least concerning its tumor. And this produces a cloud which can be seen that hangs in the area until the particles settle back down and are dispersed. Another thing to also realize about this gas is that it has been stated that enzymes responsible for producing hydrogen sulfide gases have been found at massively increased levels in cancerous cells during studies about their pathophysiology. And another thing to sort of back up this whole hypothesis on the hydrogen sulfide is that it's actually a contact irritant and causes an inflammatory and irritant effect on the moist membranes of the eyes and respiratory tract, which is why it affects your ability to see when you move through the cloud and you also begin coughing. So this gas would likely have the ability to aid in firing the tongue and intestines, but much like the boomer, this benefit is also their Achilles heel and can lead to energetic results should they be hit with a projectile in the right place.